For the purposes of court order desegregation, about 10% of Lincoln High School student bodies should be white. 2,600 are expected to be enrolled eventually. However, yesterday only five white students showed up. Today, only 15. We talked to students about the obvious boycott of the school. Edie, are you going to continue to ride the bus now? Yes. Why are other students boycotting the buses? Well, I don't know. It's okay with me. You know, I like it here. Are you afraid going to Lincoln? No. How are you being treated? Pretty nice. Everybody's been really nice to me. Has anyone been abusive to you at all? Well, not really. Not at all. It's really nice. I like it. Are any of your friends boycotting the buses? Uh, not that I know of, sir. I, I lived in, out of the town before and when I came back here and found out we were going to be bus. I didn't remember too many of the people here in Dallas, so I really don't know, sir. How do you feel about going to Lincoln, previously all black? Well, uh, before I had a bad attitude toward it. I didn't know what it would be like, but now my first day here, I kind of like it. I think it's going to work out real swell. Were you abused at all today? No, sir, I was not. No one had anything derogatory to say to you? No, sir. Thank you very much. We also talked to the principal here at Lincoln High School, Mr. Frederick Todd. We talked about the number of students who should be enrolled. Well, actually, I don't know exactly how many will show up on the basis of uh, the court order saying how many was expected to come on a census say, two years ago. I think it would be around 250, would it? Somewhere close to that. Why are they staying away? I really don't know. 250 students, new students at Lincoln High School, should be leaving on buses just like this one this afternoon. But instead, there are only 16. This is Jim Mitchell, Channel 8 News, on the move. We feel that this protest would let them know that the community, the black community, doesn't feel like they're in compliance uh, with the law for equal education. Well, there is a desegregation suit before the court. Can't you wait for that decision? Well, we feel like um, maybe by uh, protesting that this might help the decision along on the grounds that uh, we do want equal opportunity and not the idea that uh, if a, a decision is reached that maybe it won't end up like the perhaps the Dallas case ended up, whereas all black students were being bused. Uh, we mean an equal gain, whereas maybe both parties would be able to give a little bit and to take a little bit. This is what we were protesting. Within the next several weeks, the dirt road over there will become a track toward greater learning of our country for many Fort Worth school students. These 240 acres near Eagle Mountain Lake in the northeast corner of Tarrant County will make up the Outdoor Learning Center. Out here, they'll build a couple of large dormitories, a cafetorium, administration building, caretaker's house, and a barn and corral. There will be animals, nature trails, and gardens so the students can learn firsthand about nature. About half a mile down there is Eagle Mountain Lake. This old corral, the only structure here on this land, will go to make room for the modern buildings. It's being financed by a $200,000 grant from the Ross Perot Foundation to be matched by $100,000 from the school district. Plans call for completion of the Outdoor Learning Center by September 1972. Then education will take on new dimensions, away from the classrooms to a sort of school away from school. Jerry Park, Channel 8 News on the move at the site of the Outdoor Learning Center, Fort Worth. Here on the campus of Rice University, the cheerleaders are getting ready for the year, as is the football team. They face a very tough schedule. They have a new coach in Bill Peterson. He's a very intelligent football coach, and with a few seasons of good recruiting, the Rice Owl fortunes in football could certainly go up. Coach Peterson talks about his offensive unit. We're going to have uh, two wide flankers, and we're going to throw the football. We're going to run the football. But we think that, uh, just analyzing it real quickly, that uh, our first line, although we got a couple chronic injuries that we worry about, uh, uh, we got a, f a solid first line if they stay together, if we can keep, keep them together. I think our receivers uh, have a potential uh, uh, to catch a ball, although they're very young, but they do have pretty good speed. I think our tight end's a plus for us. I think he has a, is an outstanding man. I think he can really be a, a, great, a great help to us. Our offensive backs uh, and Vincent and, and Mike Phillips, I think they're, they're adequate to, to run our offense. Well, what goals have you set for yourself in this year? Uh, I really haven't set any personal goals this year. 
I did last year and it kind of fell apart. So I thought I'm kind of superstitious. So I thought I wouldn't set it this year. I just hope that the team has a lot of success. Well, the squad that we have left right now, uh, we're kind of short, you know, a lot of guys quit, but you know, we, we don't even worry about the guys quit. We just want to, you know, care about the guys who are still there. And we really, you know, real enthusiastic about coach Pete and the rest of the coaches. They have a lot of confidence and they, you know, they give you a lot of enthusiasm and, you know, it just make you where you know want to go out there and win and have pride and everything character and uh i think coach Pete's a real fine man and he's uh he's not worried about you know because we're lack of depth you know and we're just going to go out there and give it all we got with what we got well, the quarterbacks and bruce scad and uh, philip wood uh i've been impressed with the, the way they've adapted to our type of offense the way they've been reading uh reading football uh keys into tcu you know there's a great deal of discipline up there and uh the coaches are rather hard-nosed. How about Coach Pete's staff? Well, I've read all sorts of things about TC's hard-nosed coaching staff and everything. And ours is ours is quite different from what it used to be. It's uh, they are hard-nosed and they like to. I mean, things have got to be done their way, and uh, it just takes a little getting used to. And I think that's part, might have been part of the reason we lost a lot of players in the coaching change. The same way TCU did. Everybody have coaching change. You lose a lot of players, and that's mainly one of the reasons, I guess. Our defensive football team, I think, are small. Uh, they don't have a lot of strength. I think we're going to strength. I think we're going to have to maneuver them uh, well as, as a coaching staff. Uh, I think that uh, uh, solidly uh, because of the movement and the quickness that they have, that our first uh, unit uh, uh, will be adequate. Although I, I really feel that uh, uh, that we got to have some depth there. Some young kids have got to come through if we're be able to to compete with our schedule. I guess you're glad to have Rodrigo Barnes and Dale Grounds back there, aren't you? Well, I think Rodrigo Barnes can be a great linebacker. I really do that. I think Mike Tyler has, has proven himself as being a great cornerback. How do you like Coach Peterson's new regime? Well, uh, to me, he's the closest thing to a perfect coach that I've ever seen. I mean, he's got good public relations, and he has a good player-coach uh, relationship, you know, and uh, he's tough. He's a real fine coach, and uh, I, you know, a guy just couldn't ask for more if he took advantage of, you know, of the things that he offered. I think we'll have a pretty good season. It's, it's, it's going to be tough because we don't have many men. Uh, I think that if we go uh, six and seven, four would really be what a, a good deal to shoot at because we're, we're playing five teams in the top 20. So it's going to be pretty tough. And I think Dale Grounds has certainly adapted to the new position that we moved him well. And he's a great senior leader for us, and uh, we're real impressed with him. We do have some good linebackers and love Ray and Bashirs and, and a boy by the name of John Kelly. And I think that's our strong point of our defense is our, is our linebacker core and our secondary. Our front four worries us because of the size that they have and, uh, and uh, the inexperience that they have. But, that, uh, but we've got to do something to maneuver them. And then depth is again a problem. The Rice Owls open their football season next Saturday night, just a few blocks from here, before 72,000 fans against the University of Houston. It should be an auspicious occasion. This is Jerry Haynes for Channel 8 Sports. Services of Pope, Larson, and Clapton.
Mm. You please go ahead and remove. And I'm going to talk about the credibility of that committee. And it's getting a haircut. They are trying to disallow me to have freedom of thought, philosophy, and attitude, and I will not allow that. I was in my office and my son called and uh, said he had been um, jumped by five boys. And my first question was, had he been hurt? And uh, he said, uh, no, that he had a busted lip. And uh, the second question was, have you reported it to the principal? And he said, yes. And I said, well, what, is, uh, can, what are they doing about it? And he said that he just said that he had been transferred over there and that they were going to have to make the best, uh, just make it do, that they just had to tough it out that nobody liked it, but they just had to tough it out. And uh, so he decided that um, they tried, They also tried to ask him if he had money and wanted that. I'm Susie Bay Singer, and I have three girls, two that are supposed to attend Bad Story and one at Roosevelt. And I was afraid that something would happen to them today, and I did not to, you know, send them to school. I put five children in James Bowie as their younger children, and they are still there. But the other three I did not send because I was afraid they'd get hurt, and I'm not going to send them because I don't want them hurt. And if the things that have been done and said to these girls out there today, well, something like that was said to one of my kids, somebody would get hurt. Today I was going down the hall, you know, and there was a whole bunch of boys around me, you know, and they had chains, and um, one stopped and says, how you been? So I turned around, and one hit me right here on the um, right of my shoulder, and um, that's when they started to fight with my brother. And then some more started fighting with me, and then I went over to the store, and that's when that kid hit me in the eye. And then they kept on pushing me down the stairs. Mm -hmm. That's about and it. What about John? Yeah, and they stole my lunch money and everything. Okay. 